In early July 2023, a series of suspected shark attacks off Long Island's coastline spread fear amongst locals and visitors alike. As Americans headed to the beaches for their 4th of July celebrations, surfers and swimmers were hunted by the ocean's most feared predator. The culprit was not only silent, but seemingly invisible, as one by one, holidaymakers fell victim to mysterious underwater bites. Click like and subscribe. This is Fierce. It began on the afternoon of Monday, the 3rd of July. On vacation with her family, a 15-year-old girl entered the water at Robert Moses Beach. She didn't know it at the time, but there was a predator lurking under the waves. As she paddled out into deeper water, a juvenile shark came closer. It was curious. The girl's body floated at the surface, her arms and legs dangling beneath her. The sunlight reflected off her skin. Typically, sharks determine what something is by taking a bite first. They get all their tactile information from mouthing the object. If it turns out to be something other than their typical prey, then they release their grip and swim away. That's what this young shark may have been doing. It could see the outline of the girl from beneath, the splashing on the surface of the water as she swam around. It sensed the vibrations of potential prey. The shark came in for an investigative bite. Opening its jaws at the last moment, it clamped down on her left leg. The girl gave a shriek and kicked furiously underwater. She could feel the sharp teeth dig into her calf, a vice-like grip around her lower leg. As the commotion unfolded, her struggles were spotted by a lifeguard who began blowing his whistle and running towards her. Seconds later, the shark released its grip and swam away. The girl swam to the shore, terrified of what had just happened. Blood oozed from the puncture wounds on her leg, and she sat down on the beach. When the lifeguard came to her aid, he immediately called for the beach to be closed. Although the girl didn't see what had bitten her, most believed this was a shark attack. Certainly a small shark, but nevertheless, a shark attack all the same. The girl was taken to the hospital and went on to make a full recovery. No doubt she will think twice before entering the water again, but her incident was just the beginning. Another invisible attacker set its sights on the beachgoers. Just a few hours after the girl's attack at Robert Moses Beach, 15-year-old Peter Bancouli was riding the waves on his surfboard three miles to the east. He was in the surf at Kismet Beach. Under the cover of the breakers, another marine animal made its approach. Peter's left foot was dangling in the water off the back of his board while he waited for a wave. All of a sudden, he felt something grab hold of it. He knew immediately what it was. He felt the weight of it tug his foot downwards, but he held onto his surfboard firmly, refusing to let go, refusing to be pulled underwater. Moments later, the animal released its grip and swam away. Peter never saw what it was. He never saw the telltale dorsal fin or the gray back as it arched out of the water, but he was certain it was a shark. He was lucky. He managed to paddle to shore with the power of the waves pushing behind him, pushing him towards safety. When he reached the beach, he could assess the damage he had sustained properly. He called out to his friend Joe, who came rushing over. He and a member of the public helped stem the bleeding until emergency services arrived on the scene. Although slightly shocked by the incident, the young surfer says that he is not deterred from going back in the water, and once he makes a full recovery, that's exactly where he'll be headed. That's if the beaches are kept open. Following the two attacks, lifeguards scoured the coastline for sharks. They were on high alert. They knew the holidays were bringing more and more people to the beaches, and it was their duty to keep them safe. Using a drone, they searched for any sharks that may be prowling the shores. As the drone soared over the water, they spotted something that sent shivers down the spine. A school of 50 sand sharks were swimming just meters from the beach, just feet from where people were swimming. As holidaymakers splashed about in the shallows, they were unaware of the imminent danger. Although not thought of as sociable animals, some sharks have been observed hunting in packs. Could this have been a shark pack on the hunt, drawn to the beaches by the commotion of thousands of holidaymakers? In response to this sighting, beaches were closed, and news of the shark sightings spread like wildfire. Some people refused to step foot in the water. Others were undeterred. Panic set in amongst the beachgoers. 
The announcement of the alleged pack of sharks was condemned by shark experts. They said that it definitely would not have been a school of sharks patrolling the area. That behavior is very atypical of the alleged species, and the footage of the dark shadows was very poor. After consulting with lifeguards and the New York State Parks Department, it was confirmed that the shadowy school had been misidentified. They were likely a school of smaller fish, perhaps a school of black drum. Although the ominous shadow detected by the drones wasn't what people first feared, knowing that it was a large school of prey fish meant that sharks could be nearby enticed into the shallows. Although no sharks had been spotted in the incidents so far, there was no doubt about the fact that there were sharks in the area and holidaymakers were coming dangerously close to them. The following day, three more people were bitten just yards from the beaches. At Quoque Village Beach, a public swimming beach in the town of Southampton, a 47-year-old entered the water. Schools of fish darted beneath the waves. Sharks were drawn in to just beyond the breakers. As the man waded out deeper and deeper, he had no idea that he was walking towards a predator. Moments later, in the chest-high water, he felt a sharp bite on his knee. Instantly, he kicked his leg and lashed out. He looked down but couldn't see anything in the water. He cried out in panic and rushed back to the shore. He could feel the pain growing in his leg as he made his way through the water to the shallows. He was taken to the hospital and treated for his injuries no shark was sighted. As lifeguards were put on high alert, the mysterious bites kept coming. Minutes later, 60 miles away at Fire Island Pines, a 49-year-old who was swimming in the water felt a sharp tug on his hand. When he pulled his hand away, it was heavily lacerated and blood poured into the water. He too was taken to a nearby hospital and stitched up. That same day, a third attack occurred on a woman at Cherry Grove, located on Fire Island. Once more, beaches were closed, and the coastline scoured for any signs of the shark or sharks. Drones took to the skies, and lifeguards patrolled on jet skis. When no sharks were spotted, the beaches were reopened again, with a warning to remain vigilant and close to shore. Had these bites been from sharks, or had they been from another fish? there are other predatory fish that live in coastal waters. But a couple of days after the 4th of July celebrations, the ominous shadow of a 10-foot shark was seen weaving its way along the coastline, 50 feet from the beach. In two days, there had been five shark attacks. It was a significant number. In the previous year, Long Island had seen eight attacks throughout the entire year. So it looked as though 2023 may be on course to beat that number. George Gorman, a State of New York Park Director in Long Island, said that there was cause for concern. He said that officials are stepping up surveillance to keep people safe, but it is worrying about the rising number of shark attacks. The warmer waters could be drawing the sharks closer to shore. As people continue to enjoy the marine environment, they are inevitably going to come in contact with the species that live there. Maybe next time, though, they may not be so lucky.